Okay guys, John here with Lux. We're gonna install dark smoke honeycomb on this charger's tail lights. I'm gonna show you guys how I do this with the different FX films so that we have a long-term success. Um, you tend to get bubbles in these creases, more prevalent here in the middle because you put too much stretch right here. So we're gonna go over how to install this and not have that happen. So because it's an FX film, it's a little bit more stiff. It's easier to work with for this particular project you'll see my main goal is to get it completely applied down into this valley here as tension free as possible you notice whenever I start pushing right here I'm not gonna do that yet first I'm gonna pull this off of the light that way I'm walking the tent up without putting any stretch on it and I get it all the way into that crease. You'll notice I haven't even used heat yet. It's not really necessary at this point. It will be coming up. We're getting pretty close to this edge. I wanna get as far as possible. Remember, always free it off of the angled part here whenever you're applying it. that's gonna make sure you have no bubbles, no pullback in that area. This entire part is now installed all the way to the ledge. Now we're gonna introduce heat. It is critical that you use heat in this process. If you do not use heat, this will not stay long-term. I'm gonna start myself over here in this corner. And just start applying the tent. Good thing about the honeycomb pattern is I can actually see how much stretch I'm putting in the vinyl. I can use the honeycomb as a gauge. I don't want it to stretch out or change shapes. That'll be a clear indicator that we've put some weird tension on the vinyl. Everything looks really good up until this point. You can see there's a lot of tension right here. I couldn't lay that down. If I tried without heat, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up right here and tackle this top curve see it took me just pulling a tiny tiny bit of tension right here and then that just laid down perfectly flat we have a little bit of tension right here so we're gonna warm that up do the same thing just enough pull to get it to work itself down didn't change the pattern at all on the honeycomb now we'll pull out the squeegee, work the film up to the edge of the light. Grab the heat gun, heat this part up. The only thing left to do is to pull this part out right here. All this gets applied. There we go. And then pull down right here. And lay the vinyl down. Notice I'm not using heat to really like stretch the vinyl a ton. It's not necessary in this application. We're more doing it just to get the vinyl pliable. So then we can work it. You can see this is a very good looking installation so far. Um, don't have any weird tension lines anywhere around the light. Nothing's popping up inside that valley. Post heating the film now, getting it to about 200 degrees. That is critical as well. It makes the vinyl release its memory effect. So the vinyl wants to go back to flat. It started life flat and it wants to go back that way. After you heat it up to about 200 degrees, that effect is, um, is lost and the vinyl accepts its new shape. 
Now we're gonna let it cool down so we can trim it. Go ahead and grab the key while we're letting it cool so you can see the honeycomb effect. And here we go. We'll just take our knife and trim right around the edge of the light. Trimming on the bumper side. Use the squeegee to lock the tint around. Same thing, running the blade along the fender part of the car, but not perpendicular to it, so I'm not in jeopardy of scratching the paint. See, I first use my finger to help the vinyl get around that corner, so I don't want to come in and put a crease in it. We use one of our white squeegees. They tend to flex a little bit better. Now the goal is just to tuck the film all the way around the light. Get a solid bond. Well, this car has been repaired. Um, these fenders and this rear bumper have been repainted. So this light isn't exactly where it should be. Kind of having to force the squeegee in there to get the film applied. Just want to heat up around the edges. Make sure that you don't see the film lift anywhere at all. Next thing, we'll just free this off of the trunk. Basically, I want to pop the trunk right now to finish this. Sometimes I don't do this, I just tuck it down with the squeegee. But in all honesty, this is the safest way to do it, unless you know for a fact that you're getting a good application. I'm going to heat this whole piece up top to bottom until it turns real liquidy and we're going to pull at the top and the bottom just a little bit just to force the vinyl back without having any creases there we go now that it's back behind the lens we come back in here, you got a little wrinkle with it warm. I just heat that out, apply it back down. Make sure that we get it nice and hot. Go ahead and pull this off the, the car. See, I use this yellow painter statement because I could tell the car's been repainted uh, and the final does grab somewhat aggressively. I don't want the body shop not to have prepped between the paint layers correctly and us pull up some paint. It would be very hard to explain. So now we come back right behind where the plastic is and we trim. This is gonna look almost OEM. So there we go. One side of the light's done. You can see the honeycomb effect there. Looks great. Now we're gonna move on to the center. All right, so we've tinted out the left side of this car. Now we're gonna come out and do the middle section. This is not the easiest thing to record because it's so wide. I hope you guys can see. But again, the focus of this is to apply FX film with long-term success. Huh? Yeah. No, that was just, this one's so easy. I've done this on more than anything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with the film application. You can see there's plenty of film. 
left to right. We've got an overhanging five or six inches on this side. About three over here. The first thing I want to do is get the film applied to the inside valley of this light, just like we did on the left and right side. And getting it started can be the hardest part. There we go. Got it started. I'm looking at the honeycombs, making sure that they're running left and right. Nice. There we go. Bring it up off the car. Same as I did over there. I'm gonna work it all the way down into this recessed area. Down into the crease. Same thing here. All the way up to the crease. Now we are gonna have to take a little bit of tension, or I mean heat, and heat the vinyl up so we can get it to lay down. But this is looking really good in the beginning. I'm gonna move over to this driver's side and keep going this direction first, and then I'll stop and go the other direction. First thing I wanna do is now put some heat on this vinyl, just a little bit. I'm not pulling any stretch. I'm just holding it slack, but I'm pulling. I pulled just enough to lay all this down flat because this is a very slight curve. So we are asking the tent to grow just a little bit, even though it doesn't really look like it. Now that we've done that, go ahead and grab the squeegee. And while holding the tent off the ledge, or the, yeah, the, the ledge, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it all the way down into that recess. There we go. Got that top crease, nice bubble free, tension free. We've used very, very little heat. Now we're just gonna get the vinyl to lay down. Which is very easy. Let's see here. That applied. Hey, a uh, cup holder of my car. So when you don't use heat, you end up putting, it I ends up becoming it. very hard to put stretch evenly across the vinyl. It may feel like you do, but typically you actually stretch one area a lot more than the other. Uh, heat helps you even that out. So let's see. Now we're going to work this. This is going to be a little bit more difficult because we have this curve going down. But we're going to want to go ahead and remove this from the back light, from the back, back of the car. There we go. We know we have the transition nice and smooth. Bring the tint off the light completely, and we're going to heat it. Here we are gonna have to pull some tension, some stretch. So I heat everything nice and evenly and work the film right down into the recess while it's warm. Because I do that, I actually stretch here, this way. Instead of having this down and this down and then heating all this and pressing into here, that concentrates the stretch right where I don't want it to be. So using this method, we've actually put all the stretch here and not here and here. It's going to lead to a lot longer term success. So this is the same technique you'll use if you have the non-FX film. Uh, in some ways it's going to be a little easier and in some ways it's going to be tougher. Uh, that's because the film is thinner, it doesn't have the laminate layer, so it doesn't act as rigid as this is acting. Uh, so it's a little bit more difficult in the very beginning. However, when you're doing these kind of stretches and things, it's very, very simple. And uh, it's a lot easier to do that. Because it is thinner and more flexible, it resists bubbling better than the FX does. So you have to be more careful with this film than you do with that. And if you have carbon fiber or metal tint, you have to be especially careful 
textures um, don't stretch as much as non-textured. Right, here we go. We're gonna do the exact same thing over here. Free all this film up. Go ahead and put just a little bit of heat on this. It's kind of chilly. Just enough pull to get an even line right there across the button. That's fine. We want a real nice edge around the button, which it looks like we have. So this is great. In here, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna free this all off here. Heat all this up. Work it right into this recess. Go ahead and apply all this here. There we go. Lift that off the top of the light. A little bit of heat just to soften the vinyl. And the same thing, get it applied all the way to the recess. Vinyl's applied nice and tension free like that, you can just lift and hold. You don't actually have to pull. It's because I have these two little fingers right here. I'm gonna use my squeegee to get rid of them. Now I have a nice line I can work with. Don't wanna accidentally put any creases in it. There we go. I'm gonna grab this, pull right down here in this direction, because I know that's how the vinyl's gonna wanna be fed. Get it all applied. Again, we concentrated that stretch right here. It's nice and warm. Get that applied. Last thing, you want to get that button cut out. Make sure you use a lot of heat. And get it well defined. Once it's well defined, it's very easy to just trim out. You don't have to go on the button side. You can go right on the side of the plastic. There's no reason to have extra film to try to tuck between. It's a very, a very tight fitting button. Uh, some people don't even cut this out. It's really up to you. I like to think that you'll have better success if you do cut it out, especially if there's any moisture back there like there was. I just got a little bit out. I'd hate to have trapped that back there and had it ruin the install. So I just want to make sure the film is applied all the way to the edge, all the way around. that we don't have any weird fingers hitting the edge. Um, we want all those to be gone before we cut. So it looks like they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting right in the middle. So I know I can poke my blade right there and I won't scratch the car. Remember I'm holding it perpendicular to the car. Parallel to the car, excuse me, not perpendicular. Now the goal is just to tuck this right up under the light.
Now I'll always just kind of post heat a little bit throughout this process. I'm gonna do it a couple of times. It's just a sanity check. It's just making sure that we have long-term success. Same thing right along the top of the light. Now with this, I'm not gonna pop the trunk just yet. The reason is, I'm gonna make sure and cut some of this away. I don't wanna pop the trunk and rip the tent. Okay, so we've done the middle section here. We've done the left section, the driver's side. So all we have left is this passenger side. It's gonna be the exact way I did the um, driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and film both though. So you have a completed video, completed installation. First goal, get it down in the middle section of the light. All the way up to the ridges. Now that I'm pretty close, I am gonna use a little bit of heat to help the film. Just a little bit of heat. Now getting the film worked all the way into that ridge. There we go.
go. I'm gonna lift it off the painted surfaces and get it pushed down into the crack. There we go. Now, very important, come back and post heat everything. Also, when you're heating, if you see any the vinyl move or pop up at all, you know you haven't even put enough pressure there. So, that's a good visual indicator you need to apply more pressure. Looking good. I'm gonna apply some heat. Just make sure that the vinyl is nice and applied around all the edges. Now for the last bit. Check everything. Everything looks good. We have no micro bubbles in any of these creases right here. That's very important. You want it to look as OEM as possible. It needs to look exactly like the plastic looked before you put the tent there. If there are any little bubbles there, they do tend to spread. Um, but this is a full installation of the Dark Smoke Honeycomb on a Dodge Charger.